trying to think. Add Mark Chapman. Oh, is he now? Look. Oh, that's it. Look. Full house. <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, Lockdown Beers with Matt Motorsport. Uh, the one, two, and three from Drift Cup last year. One, two, and three? No. No, not quite. Not quite. Oh. <laughs> it was spreading false rumours. Where did you go, boys? <laughs> We, um, Jamie, Jamie won it, and then it was James, and then there was a couple in between, and then I think I came fifth. Um, Alex from the team came fourth. Lee, so yeah, we did all right. She did, right. did, did a good job at Drift Cup, then, last year. <laughs> yeah, Drift Cup, we did all right, and then before that, we did all right in um, King of the Ring as well. Yeah. So, so who is Matt Motorsport? What are you lads about? Uh, who's on the team? Give us a bit of info about Matt. Um, Matt started years, years and years ago, about about five six years ago. Um, I went I went and did a bit of drifting. Um, then invited my mate Paul. He invited his mate Alex. Alex invited Tom. Tom come up with the name Matt, and then that's where Matt started. Um, and we was at Lyndon Hill back then, um, just doing practice days. And then Lyndon Hill finished, and we was looking for somewhere else to go. Alex said to us, I've got a car, let's come up to Arena Essex. Um, and then we all went up there, had a play in his car up there, fell in love with it. Next day, and did three odd years of King of the Ring. Um, invited a few other lads into the team. Um, Jamie, Jamie came into the team. Um, we had. What's the criteria to make it into the team? Like, is there a, is there a process? Crash into them all. The what? Crash into them all. Oh, that's <laughs> pretty much how I got that. in the team. <laughs> Pretty much get yeah, invite yourself really, get get noticed, um, get talking to us and then um, yeah. Kind of so how many it. how many drivers is on Map Motorsport? Now there is yeah. six. Um I think there was maximum of seven I think we've had, but we're we're back to six. Um we lost John and then we replaced John with James. Um James James uh, we knew we knew James from Drift Cup, and uh, James introduced himself to me personally um, with his beer. <laughs> <laughs> he literally was he was dead. I said I wasn't going to bring it up, but he was dead um, to chuck a, a beer over me, and uh, he so he did, and uh, I wasn't that impressed with him. Um, but, <laughs> But he made an impression clearly, and uh, yeah, he's now in the. When you say not very impressed, what was the actual <laughs> real story? What actually happened? Um, we was at the Drift Cup party. I think there was like George Barkley on the barbecue, um, actually there, um, was doing another barbecue. It was all stood around just having a chat, and there were some lads from from the, the other lads from that that were there, um, and I think my mate Phil, who was previously a map. We stood alongside James and being James and James being James. Thought it'd be funny to uh, spray his beer over me. <laughs> yeah, and none of that really for that day. <laughs> it's a uh, funny way to go into a team that seems to have worked out for you, like. Yeah. What does Matt stand for? It's um, it's the four founder members' names: um, Mark, Alex, Paul, and Tom. All right, cool. No, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, not really anything to do with mapping or something, <laughs> but all our cars are mapped, as, as it were. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, do you want to give us a bit about your drift history, each one of you? Like, where did you start? What got you into it? we start with you, Jamie. Oh, well, drift history. Well, I basically started off drifting i was actually trying to work this out today how long ago that was it's probably about 2014 and i basically went out and uh 
my, my dad at the time brought a Volkswagen Amiga 2.5 diesel to rip the yes. engine out on. And long story cut short, we managed to keep the Amiga and convince him to let me buy the Amiga to drift it. Right. I ended up taking it, putting it on the road, and I used to drive it with my mate to have a big car park on um, National Rail. used to use it for doing maintenance over like on his farm. And I actually learned to drift on this massive concrete pad on my mate's farm. And then this was probably September 2014. And then Christmas 2014, I went and done my first King of the Ring event in this Amiga. And then literally just got addicted to basically improving myself, improving the car, trying to like make it actually drift properly. Um, so I basically, from the word go, I was messing around doing small second first gear little things to going straight into doing a competition at Essex Arena which I was there about two years doing Essex Arena and then I li- quite literally bumped into the Mac guys right. literally. Very, quite literally. <laughs> had a meeting with them for the first day which was a come down and meet and greet and like get to know the team and like, a bit of like some friendly skids on a, 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 a practice day and uh, I think I crashed into every single one of them, apart from Alex. Um, <laughs> I somehow managed to hit one of them with my tow bar backwards into the driver's yes. door, which <laughs> is, is quite an accomplishment to do that. And then, yeah, it pretty much just sprung from there. It was just done King of the Ring with them for quite a few years. Um, just basically just having fun. And then we've been talking about Drift Cup for the last two years, and it was just... It's, with Essex Arena shut on it, it was just like the best opportunity to go. It was just, I've been building the car over about three years and had no end of problems with it. And then we all just kind of agreed last year that we were all going to go for it and just go for one full season. Was that your first year in Drift Cup then, Jake? Yeah, that was my first year. Right. First year actually well, doing it was all, all, of our it, all of your first year? Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. It was our first year into Drift Cup and it was... It was a weird one. It was really, I think everyone agrees when we first turned up, it was, it was, everyone felt like you'd brought like a knife to a gunfight. You all seem to do all right, like. (laughs) Just have to kick the hell out of it. (laughs) It proves that it's not all about silly, it's not all about silly cars, is it? You don't have to have the the best car in the world to do well. It it becomes a limitation, but definitely in drift cup wise, you can still do it with a, like, fairly average car. The tracks do. The tracks are very um, in favour of you with some. They don't. They make it a level playing field. Some of the tracks. Yeah. Like Driftland, for example. If they do BDC layout Driftlands, that's quite a big down the straight onto. Yeah, you need the power you a bit more. Far. Whereas Drift Cup's quite flowing. It's quite a nice, slow, technical track layout. That's down to sweeps, I guess, isn't it? Yes, yeah, any up to super drivers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he knows he wants it to be. Grassrootsy, I suppose he knows that not everyone's got thousand horsepower. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. When we when we went to 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 drift around, it was not obviously not the the, the layout that BDC normally do. So how um, what where did you finish in drift cup? I know you finished first, but like, did, how many podiums did you get, or how did you get to the first place? Um, to be fair with you, it was uh, it was a fair fight all the way through. I think James was doing well throughout the year, but um, I think I got two podiums in Drift Cup. Jay, remember, you came from non-seeded to seeded, so you actually had to get from the non-seeded to seeded. Yeah, group. I started off, yeah, I started off non-seeded. I had to go through on seeds, get into seeded. What round? What round did you get up to seeded class? Uh, that was the first round I got up to Oh, seeded. straight up. Yeah, it was... That was, that was my goal for the year, was purely just to get into seeded. Yeah, and then yeah. like BDC was like a dream come to, true type thing. I thought I would have, have to go through and do the whole season to get up into seeded. So when the first round were over and done with, I think it was a bit of like a shock for me. Yeah. <laughs> Did you all start in seeded group? In the non-seeded group? No, I started. Yeah. The three, of, um, three guys from Matt originally were um, Paul, uh, Alex and myself, and uh, we went straight in. Right. No, sorry, Alex didn't. Um, it was me, John, 
and um, uh, Paul, who, uh, who went into the seeded group first off. And then Alex and Jamie both came from the non-seeded. That was right. uh, King of the Ring Championship points, weren't it? Yes, that's oh, how we right. got it. And Jamie seeded um, Norfolk, the Norfolk comp with Melts and whatnot there. Ah, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then his place through Dimax. Yeah. So what about your drift history, James? Um, well, I started, I started in sort of 2016, um, drifting anyway. Um, I, I went up to Norfolk Arena with, from an, with an invite from uh, Liam, Liam Stevens, um, just to go up there and sit in his passenger seat and sort of have a laugh, I suppose. Um, and... During the day, obviously, that's, that's exciting. And before before we even left North Korea, I'm on the phone, on eBay, on Facebook, look, looking, what what can I buy? What can I buy that's sort of cheap and turn into a drift car? I need to have a go at this. I've got a <laughs> personality, so it's, it's <laughs> spiral from a 500 pound E46 up to God knows how much money's in the new build. But, um, yeah, did, did drifting for probably... Two two years just prattling around with with Malks up at Norfolk Arena or now Adrian Flux Arena, um, yeah, and then did the Dimax thing that he he's mentioned um, ended up winning that to to gain me a spot in Drift Cup because that that year was at SDC so Scottish Drift Championships Dimax King of the Ring and RDC the top three drivers I think from each of those rounds were given a, a seeded spot in Drift Cup for 2015. Right. So that's how I got into Drift Cup. I hadn't even thought about Drift Cup prior to winning the event. So had I not come in the top three, I wouldn't, I, I doubt I would have done Drift Cup in 2019 at all. Um, yeah, and then went on to do that. Done, done quite well throughout the year. Had a bad round three, which you, you two were at, you, you see. Um, I think we were at every round. We were at every we round, didn't we? Apart from Scotland. Yeah, I remember sitting. I was sitting just to to your right on the bank at at, at round three, a bit down, <laughs> car broken, <laughs> missing out on valuable points. <laughs> three so, no, uh, two. Oh, 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 yeah, we were sat next to all your lads, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Um. I thought it was quite funny that James said it out because he chucked me a beer on me that day. <laughs> a bit of karma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the night before. <laughs> that was the night before. Was that the night before? I think, yeah. How um, did your drift cup season go? Like, what podiums and stuff did you get? Um, I I got one one podium. I had one fourth and then one, one first. Um, qualified first twice throughout the year both at three sisters so three sisters I, I quite um so i finished in the championship in the end second behind jamie it's good going yeah um last year i wasn't a mapped member at the time um so yeah that's that's a, a new a new venture for me but obviously throughout the year uh got to know the lads obviously because you're do you like them? Are they any good? Do you like them or not? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I guess I crashed into, into two of them. I think both at Three Sisters, weren't it? In the finals and finals. Who's, who's the better driver, just out of you three? Well, on paper. No, just not on paper. In your heads. <laughs> who's going to win? <laughs> yeah. So if they were in a, a battle, like a competition... With all six map drivers, who would be winning it? I I beat Jamie twice at King of the Ring, and <laughs> Jamie beat me at Three Sisters because my car wasn't working. Oh, okay, get that bit in there because <laughs> yeah. the car wasn't working. <laughs> I'd had a fire uh, early in the morning, so it was a recovery. So yeah. Thing is, we didn't ask you how your car worked. We asked you who were going to win. No. Uh, <laughs> that was both at Three Sisters, and obviously I came out on top. Jamie in the semi-final, Mark in the final. Um, I've not battled any of the others. Oh, no, I did battle John, but he was in somebody else's car, which he'd never driven before. <laughs> Is John the one for the S14 who yeah. got pushed into Shed at Drift Cup? Yeah. 
Oh my god, that was amazing. Oh, which which shed? The first uh, three sisters. He got pushed off track into the shed. Oh, the first oh, yeah. shed or the last shed? The last one, I think it were. At the finish line. Yeah, I just remember that yellow map car get pushed off the track and into yeah. the shed. Yeah. Oh, it was, was it Jason who lent him his car, and then John went on to get. Yeah. Um, what was it? Oh, the three hundred ZX. Yeah. That's what I battled him in. Yeah. Yeah. So back to the question: Who's best? Who's going to win? <laughs> Let please and tell us. We need, to, we need to see how James's car does. <laughs> you need, you need more confident answers. If you ask it about slide drivers, I'm 100 percent the best driver. Yeah, every no. time I'm going to win. No, I'll win. 100. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'd like to win. What about your history then, Mark? It sounds, it sounds like you've been doing it a bit longer than these two. Easy. I'm just a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm a little bit older as well, so. <laughs> He's the partner figure of the group, I think. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> um, well, I, like I say, I was I started at Lyddon Hill, um, but I did do an L2D day. Um, did one day there with Andy, and then was doing practice days at Lyddon Hill. I even practiced in grass fields with my P30 that I went up to like a scrapyard and bought it from from a scrapyard. Didn't even know what I was really buying at the time. Um, got it back and then attempted to turn it into like a drift car. And I was using it in like this grass field and then I started taking it to um, Lyndon Hill and then developing it there. You probably um, develop it a bit better at Lyndon rather than in a field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, changed, I changed it to an M50 engine. Uh, 2.5 M50 and then changed it to an M52 2.8 um, just looking for more power all the time in it um, keeping it simple um, and then basically Lynn Hill finished so that's when we went to um, Arena Ethic King of the Ring and then you know, three odd years there um, with an E36 which I've still got and um, still use practice days. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then so did you compete the, for the three years at King of Ring? Sorry? Did you do like the competitions for the three years there? Yeah, all, all three years were competitions, yeah. There was like, I think it was like about seven comps a year. Um, right. And then I, I always finished in the top 10, quite high up. Um, and then in the final year, I think, Second to my mate right. John. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite good, good good experience. And then we did um, we did a lot of demos for the King of the Ring uh, for actual Arena Essex owners. Anyway. And uh, in return, we got um, free practice. So me oh. and John especially took um, most advantage of it. We was there every two weeks. Right. Um, so from four o'clock in the afternoon till like nine o'clock at night, we was out drifting um, over the rest. And then, um, yeah, back to the bar and, uh, <laughs> and then had a, had a McDonald's and then back, back down to Kent. So, cool. Yeah. So then, when did we go to uh, Arena Essex? When, when were that? Uh, 2018, I think it was. Oh, really? The Christmas right. one, wasn't it? Right. I remember I going down there expecting it to be like a Buxton shitty comp <laughs> in a standard shitty cars and we got absolutely <laughs> trounced, didn't we? Yeah, like we proper set up 36s and stuff. On semi slicks and stuff like that, we were on 15 inch yeah. part ones and yeah, we didn't kind of realise how serious it were, did we, the competition? No. It didn't, it wasn't always like that. It did develop quite a lot and because um, Bags, Bagsy was running it and. Um, it got Westlake to sponsor it, so it was actually winning tires as well. Right, and right. So that was quite cool, yeah. Getting sets of tires. Um, um, and then I, I think Bagsy set us up there, though, because Bagsy invited us down, didn't he? Mm. But he didn't say anything about everyone being on semi slicks and stuff like that. He just wanted his boys to be. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, get yourself down here, lad. Well, I, think it, I think he was quite proud of us all, really, because there's a lot of guys come through. 
from uh, King of the Ring and um, yeah. through ranks and like Alistair Sutton and uh, and Dan Taylor and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a yeah. lot of guys. Danny Grundy were one as well, weren't he? Yeah, he he was one of the first actually, wasn't he? Yeah. What's yeah, happened to him? Do you all live near him? No. Oh right. We see him at Swaffham. Was you there then? What's that, James? Oh, sorry. He was at Swaffham when 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 we done that um, London Lithuanian drift competition thing. He was a Oh, driver. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I've not seen him for a while. So then, obviously, he started Drift Cup last year. How did you get on in Drift Cup? Like round for round kind of thing. Did you get any yeah, podiums? Round for round one, I broke my car. Or it broke itself. Um, the day was going really well. Um, and then just before qualifying the car, the phonic wheel spun, and uh, that was the end of the go for that car. So I borrowed my car. Um, still qualified, but got knocked out against, I think, Christian Rice. Um, and then round two was Norfolk, got top eight there. T side was um, against. Charlie Charles got me out, I think, in top 32, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and then back to three sisters, car caught fire, and um, practice. Um, it's a theme, a theme here. <laughs> yeah, was, at, at three sisters, it didn't really go that well. To be um, but then, luckily, we managed to fix it. The whole team came together, gave me a hand, um, repaired the car as best we could. It wasn't wasn't right, um, and then <laughs> we uh, we went and battled all the way. Couldn't believe my luck, really. I was thinking, Christ, I'm, am I really in top four? And then it was like, <laughs> well, now now I'm in the final. Um, so it, it was a really really good day that one, and um, I, I wasn't really worried about the result by that point. But, um, went one more time against James, so. Um, Eventually, James come out on top, but um, which is still car, a little bit bitter about, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah the car had a bit of a misfire, and he and he crashed into me, so it looked like he was nice and close, but um, <laughs> it was the car slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in the ground. You need to but yeah, got, got a second. Uh, how come none of you moved up to BDC mid-season? Uh, I I personally wanted to see out the whole season. Um, that's what kind of I, I thought to do. I don't know about the other lads. I had every intent to um, when the BDC was at Driftland. My plan was to do Driftland. I, I met Matt and asked him about rules, like what I need to sort of change to my car to make a BDC spec. Um, but it just didn't happen. I just I did go. I can't remember the exact reasons, but I ended up saying, I'm glad I sat there. You are, sorry? I'm glad I stayed at Drift Cup, to be fair. Got a yeah. bit it's a good thing, I think. Like As much as you want to quickly rush up there and get to BDC, it's good to gain the experience and, and then turn up and be ready for it and actually do well. Com- competition experience, getting used to the car. The car was still fairly new, really. Um, yeah, I'm glad I stayed or saw the, saw the season out. That was, that mm. was a good laugh. Yeah, there's not a right and wrong thing to do, is there? It's like, if you want to move up, move up. If you want to stay down and try and go for a championship, then good on you kind of thing. But what about you, Jamie? How come you what made you want to stay down? I uh, didn't actually get our top 16 until um, Three Sisters, where me, James and Mark done like one, one, two, three. And funnily enough, I did actually book on to go to BDC Three Sisters and then realised it was the week after Driftland. So I wasn't actually going to go to the last round of Driftland for Drift Cup. But as it got closer, it was one of the things where the car was ready to go to PDC the week after. I just went, because I because I paid for the season, I just went to the fun of it. That's the reason yeah. I went to Driftland. And it was, it was one of the events where I just went there with like, just going for fun type thing. It wasn't a competition. It was just to go have fun. And then, yeah, as soon as... Driftland was over. A week later, I was back at Three Sisters for BBC. <laughs> so if you didn't go to Driftland, would you have not have won the championship? No, I was miles out of it. 
At half eleven the night before, the Saturday night, I was sat in a, a restaurant with a, one wee stew, there's one yeah. of the old drift cup drivers now in BDC, and he was like, Do you reckon you can win the championship? I looked at him and went, You've got to be kidding me. If you see the odds you needed to actually get the points I needed to get top of the championship, I was like, that never happened. And it was just, that's what I mean. It was the whole championship for the whole year. But like everyone just drove insane. It was just more, it was more of a down to luck than anything. That's brutally honest with you. Do you know what I mean? It was like... The stars aligned and it was a perfect yeah, event. What, and I, it, was, it was something like Alex, James and Mark had to get knocked out of top 32 and I had to get in the final. Right. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and that, yeah, was exactly what happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you two were both in the final? No, no, no. We the top. No, not you, uh, Mark. No, I got knocked out of top thirty-two as well. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I don't know. James, James organised it. I think. <laughs> oh, right. So yeah, cars for this year. I know two of you have got new cars to bring to BDC. You want to uh, tell us about them? Why you? Uh, why you fucked off your old cars? Should I go first, James? Yeah. Um, well, in cage, one reason I guess I I got rid of my old car. I fancied a change. Um, I wanted. I, I had a compact last year, and I always struggled with grip. I was chasing grip all year round. Um, at round one of Drift Cup, I qualified for and done really well. And then it weren't until I battled the top, my top four, I guess. And I think I was against uh, Will Gibbs, I think it was. Yeah. And he just disappeared. Like, and I was like, what, what, how? I am on the limiter and he's just gone. So, yeah, it, it, it was at that point I realised. What, what tyres were you using, James? Uh, I was on a. 225 45 17 it's supposed to be a semi slick but side to side some foreign thing i don't know if you've heard mm-hmm. of them. no i've never heard of them. they weren't true but he, he was on a 265 tri ace no you don't run 265s now it will will's um, on 17s isn't he? He, he, he were, i think you're on 225 two, right yeah, he was 225 17s doesn't he will Anyway, either way, he 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 left me for dead, so that that opened my eyes. Um, yeah. and basically, I I bought some Zestinos from Maxwell, and that's what I did round four, four, yeah, four. Um, and then I found I had a trip, but still I said no. Um, so I decided to build a coupe. So what's the idea of the coupe having more grip than a compact? Are they not the same back end? Well, they're, they're obviously the same wheelbase, same same as your car. Um, yeah. There's there's more overhang on a coupe, so obviously the the centre of gravity is is a bit different. Um, I don't know. That was my thinking. It yeah. More grip, and now I've done full and full full rear end, and the tank is in the back, the radiator's in the back. So I'm I'm going to create more mechanical grip this year than I than I could last year. And then hopefully tires, but we'll sort of see. Um, but yeah, for a bit of a different engine. What, uh, what engine is in yours? Well, I was one JZ last year, and I've gone yeah. two JZ this year. Cool. Um, bought Walton's Manifold, got a G3900 turbo, Garrett's new new series turbo. That should make some good power with them things on, shouldn't it? Yeah. They look really hopefully, good, though. Um, yeah, link, link Fury ECU, everything. The whole build pretty much is is new. The only thing that I've transferred over is the back end and the wise have front end. Mm. Is it done and ready? Is it ready? No. <laughs> no. I'm a I'm a I'm a core for thank, thank you guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're happy about it. What's left? How far off is it? Um, it's not far off really. It wiring, mapping, a little bit of pain. Wiring is the big thing. I, I, it's one of them jobs that I'm. It's it's not what I'm good at. Wiring, so I'm putting that off. Doing all the little jobs around wiring. We'll get there. 
and then mapping whenever that's allowed. Who do you use for mapping? Um, last year I was on an Emerald ECU, so I used uh, John at Emerald. And Emerald were only up the road from me, really, at Watton. Um, but this year I'm going to use uh, MB Martin Batty. Yeah. Cool. What well, about your new car, Jamie? My new car, the car of loads of history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Richard Grimrod and then on to Andy Frost. It's pretty much done now, to be fair with you. Um, it would have been, I had it out and tested it start of the year. Just the, the touring had a lot of sentimental value to me from when I built it. Um, it actually, with my road car and it burnt out. Right. It went proper, went up in flames, like there was nothing salvageable inside. It took me two weeks to basically get the smell out of it, a burnt car. So when <laughs> I built that, it was like, it was quite sentimental to me. And I, when I done Drift Cup, I kind of intentionally clipped the walk Driftland, just like I hit Driftland's wall, and then yeah. clipped the walk Buxton and kind of went, well, if I have any accidents mid-season now, it's going to be a lot more of a pain to repair, if not a write-off to the shell to repair an estate over a coupe. Um, and I was there the day when Richard took the car apart for Andy Frost. I was there with Richard watching him take it apart. Um, I looked at it and I was just like, if I had the money, I'd have this car. I was in love with it from the first time I see it. Yeah. And literally, the second Andy Frost put it up for sale, I was there on the phone to him, like, I want it, I want to deposit it, I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> uh, just the fact that it's a coupe, it's got clamshell rear, uh, clamshell rear end on it, and it's been, the, the work that's been done over it on the years is just second to none, like the build quality on it. Mm. Yeah. So I've pretty much transferred everything out of the estate into the coupe, um, apart from, I've got, I think I've got a different lock kit on this one now, so it's same kind of rear end, it's just that the, I've got CLM on the front now rather than the wise fab. Because um, I weren't really getting on with the wise fab. Um, yeah, I know it took that. A long, long, long time to get used to it and to get it right. And then when I did get it right and I bent something, I see the price and it's like, ouch. <laughs> I, bent a trap, I bent a trap rod at Buxton and it was bent for the top 16 battle and battle royale. And it's still bent now. I just. The standard track rods. it out, got the alignment about right. And... <laughs> the track rods aren't expensive. We've got them at slide on shelf. The like, standard BMW them. ones. Not BMW. The standard BMW ones, aren't they? These oh, yeah. ones, From, on, on, on the E46. Oh, yeah, only inner. Yeah, yeah, the inner. Oh, you bent the outer. I bent the inner. Yeah, they're just standard BMW ones. Oh, yeah. Mine's a E36 inner with a slot a thing that slides over it and then the voxel astral outer all oh, right <laughs> and it's like frankenstein yeah it's a gen one it's a like one of the very first voice app kits there's no adjustment on it. there's no caster or camera adjustment on it right it's just all <laughs> stick it on and you can go away yeah pretty much stick it on and go so uh yeah the coupe and on the plus side to lockdown i've now managed to up the horsepower from the 300 uh, i don't know what it's going to be yet but I've had a single uh, a GTX 3076 and a standalone sat in my bedroom for the last, well, Turbo's been there about a year and the standalone's been there three years. So, right. On the to-do list. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, just, that's all it was. Just having the car that was a bit more easier to repair and maintain and keep it looking straight as possible without having to do major amounts of work. Um, Sweet. So yeah, that's the I just fancy the coupe for a change. Yeah. <laughs> so, but your your old car, you still got that, haven't you? Yeah, I've got. Uh, I used to, my old King of the Ring car took the engine out the King of the Ring car, and that's now in this estate. So I've actually right. driven the estate more since I bought the coupe than I have the coupe because I've had the estate out and just done drift day after drift day of just play day in it because it's till eight, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the enjoyment out of it. Yeah, and don't use as many tyres and all that jazz. No, nowhere near as many tyres, and you do a whole day skidding on 30 quid worth of fuel. Yeah. <laughs> if only. Yeah. So what about your car, Mark? Have you done out to that over winter? Uh, over the winter, yeah. I, 
I decided I wanted a bit more drivability, so and a bit more reliability as well from the, like the manifold side, turbo manifold side. So I changed both manifolds, um, built a new exhaust system, um, and remapped really. And then now I've got more time to look at the rad conversion. Um, Still only running budgets at the moment, so um, we'll see how strong the rear end is, and then um, see how much more we can push it to, to get a bit more grip and uh, grab it past them. So, are you all running budgets next year? <clears throat> um, I don't know. What are you running, Joe? Uh, I'm meant to be. I've gone up to a two six five thirty five this year, semi-slick, and we're trying to get my hands on some, I've got some, I've got to get my hands on some more from somewhere, I haven't yeah. decided what yet, um, but I'm a bit concerned, the same as Mark with drivetrain, because the tyre size I was running last year to this year is a bit of a jump for me, so it yeah. could be interesting to see which way it goes. Just bring plenty of spares with you. <laughs> yeah, I've got plenty of shafts. <laughs> yeah. What about you, James? Uh, I'd like to run a semi-slick, um, it sort of funds funds really my, my car my build the bill on my bill has just gone through the roof <laughs> yeah it's, like it's, out hand, it? <laughs> it's got very out of hand <laughs> so yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see I'd it like will be interesting i think it'll be interesting to see like if you how you get on without the semi-slicks yeah you know to see if like in the pro and pro 2 class if the consistency and the driving is better than People over gripping the cars and not being able to chase you and stuff. I, th I think the um, lack of grip, I think you can still smash easy top 16s, top 8s. Not easy, but you know, a good driver with a lower spec, well, a lower grip car can definitely get to there. Yeah, but it's, it could become a restriction for me. Yeah. Maybe, it's maybe not. We don't want to be top. Yeah. What's that? We don't want to be I was running. Um, Budgets at Buxton against um, the lads there. I, it was my mistake, but I only got to top eight there. But kind of held me own, I think, until until I made a, a slight error against uh, Fitzgerald, I think it was. So, yeah. Oh, so you're on, on budgets at Buxton? Budgets at Buxton, yeah. All right, it seemed to go well, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it weren't slow. It weren't no, slow. it didn't look slow. So BDC, now you're, you're all coming up to BDC. What tracks are you looking forward to? What? Well, we might have missed it already, but <laughs> what tracks do you think you're looking forward to and what you want to go to most? Uh, for me, it's Three Sisters and uh, finish at Buxton. Um, on three. But I'll enjoy them all, I'm sure, and especially if we get, get some this year as well. Just any kind of drifting would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Anything. Yeah, Sainsbury's car park. Is you got Sainsbury's car park? Yeah, yeah. that might not be true, please. But that's it. Get, get around in Sainsbury's car park, Matt. I'll sort it out for you. What about you other two, Jamie? Uh, I'm looking forward to boxing again, definitely. Yeah. Um, three sisters I enjoy. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what Manchester's like as well, if that goes ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to be... A, I've, I always wanted to drive at NEC, and that was like... If I was ever going to do it, NEC was the one track I wanted to drive at, and I think Manchester sounds like it's just going to be the same sort of thing again. But I just like the thrill of, thrill of wolves, and that's always been my issue. <laughs> Unless there's something to hit, it don't really give me much of a buzz. I think more and more people are coming round to the walls idea, aren't they? We went through a, a couple of years period where people were scared of them and there was quite a bit of a mix with it. It's now a lot bigger percentage that like the walls there and it adds to the danger, doesn't it? It's it's just just something, the thrill. It, and it gives you something to aim for, doesn't it? Do you, know, exactly. like, do you, yeah. you know if you're online, if you're near that wall. What about you, James? What track are you looking forward to going to most? Um, judging on how I did 2019, I, I would say three sisters. That's where I sort of drove drove my best. Um, which is weird because when I when I think about it, I feel that um, T side would would be my most favourite track. But 
I don't know, three sisters. Or yeah. T side, but Matt obviously Rob Rob the Rob the Pro to be driving. <laughs> Pro Tools are uh, draw Driftmasters there. Uh, we'll go for Driftmasters. Yeah. Come and watch. You can just have a piss up. Just enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've booked, I think we've all booked tickets, haven't we, to go watch? We've booked an Airbnb. Yeah, we've booked the, 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 the hotel. Yeah. Real. Sweet. So, we turn up to BDC and your car's broke. You'll have to pick any driver off at Grid's car for the weekend. Whose car we have in? Oh, yeah. Is that you, Mark? Oh, sorry. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, Andy Frost, uh, Alice, LS3, I think it is, and V8, yeah. Should be should be well set up and uh, well built. And, uh, I'd, I'd like to give that a go. What, and his new, is he 30? He's, um... The is it the one? Two? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 He's yeah. yeah. stars, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. What about you, Jamie? Who's car are we having? Funnily enough, if I had to pick a car, it'd actually be Mark's car. Yeah. Believe it or not. Because really? Every single time he offers me to drive that car is always a day before competition. He's like, drive it. And I'm like, nah, nah. And it looks like such a handful to drive, yet when you get it right, it's so rewarding. It's just one of the things, like Huxley Silica. Yeah. <laughs> they always used to say that Huxley Silica, you used to have to, like, properly drive it. It weren't easy to drive. I saw always see Mark T30. He's either fighting it or he's got it perfect. Yeah. So, what about you, James? What car are we having? Well, yeah, uh, Ollie Evans, probably, because it's, it's two Jay-Z and I've never drifted a, never drifted an S-body and everyone claims that they are the drift car to have. So, I'd like to, I'd like to have a go in one of them and see what the, see what the hype is all about. In fact, you're all BMW drivers, aren't you? Have any of you driven Nissan before? Never. Never? Kind of. No. <laughs> you don't have to learn to drift Don't have to learn to drift once. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not really the same. <laughs> have you all been working for Andy? No. I know you work for him, don't you, David? I, I work for him. I've been working for him three years now. But mainly, I look after the, the, the Lexuses and the fleet of cars. That's mainly my full time job. Oh, right. Looking after cars. Um, oh, so you don't teach people? I do you? teach now and then, but I prefer to stay away from it because obviously, when you're greasy, dirty, and mucky, you don't really want to be mixing with customers and stuff. So I try to avoid it where I can. Um, but his workshop's only 10 minutes from my house. So right. I need to work on drift cars every single day of life, like 10 minutes from your house is. Quite nice as such. I know you can't really class them as proper cars, <laughs> yeah. but they are fun to work on at times. So do all other map boys come up and do a bit of driving and stuff like that, or no? Um, we have we have done once, I think it was in the past. But that's when yeah. I dropped myself in it, wasn't it? Yeah. When I was underneath a car working on one of Andy's cars, and you got, I said to you guys, why did you not tell him? That you can fix cars, and they said, "Well, you just proved why we didn't tell you we can fix cars, because <laughs> you said you can fix cars, and now you're underneath them getting dirty." <laughs> that was pretty much shit. That's how I got the job. Was that weekend? <laughs> teaching the customers. Ch- changing the steering rack on an S14, and I'd never looked underneath an S14 before in my life. And I just lounged there and was like, "What's this? The sump's in the wrong place." <laughs> I know. I'd, I did a bit of teaching for Andy when he used to go to Donington. He had me changing alternators and all sorts. And if you know anything about me, you don't want me touching any mechanics on a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a. We'll say it's an experience working at a learn to drift day. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, who's your favourite driver? The one that you might look up to most? Or you like the driving style, etc. Uh, me, James D, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Smooth, ultra consistent. Yeah. Just cool. Yeah. Just seems to deliver every time. Yeah. <laughs> Knows when to turn it up to eleven, doesn't he? Exactly. What about you, James? Um. Well, I've got two, kind of. Um. If, a, if you're talking worldwide, again, James Dean, because he's just 
the machine is absolutely unreal. Um, but then if you're talking BDC, then Martin Wanakov. Martin? Yeah. Yeah, he's flat out, isn't he, all the time? <laughs> yeah. Teetering on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Never know what's going to happen with him. What about you, Jamie? That's a really weird one. I'd probably say with James, I've probably got two. Um, one of like, my most favourite to watch drivers is probably Dwayne McKeever. Purely on the fact that his driving style seems to be at the opposite end of the spectrum to everyone else's. And it completely and utterly fries my brain as such. How his <laughs> style and his rhythm and that, how he, his drive style, he's adaptive to everything. Um, but weirdly enough, one of my idle drivers... Don't and, say Matt Stevenson. No, no, no. <laughs> no one's ever said that, mate. Ever. It's a weird one because he's kind of, he's been like this since I started drifting. That's Alistair Sutton. Do you know the... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Good drive, he Alistair. was probably, I think the first time I qualified at King of the Ring in my Amiga, I had him in top 32. And he was kind of the first guy who actually came up to me. As much as you, some of you know, he's really shy. First guy to come up to me and actually help me. And give me yeah. advice. And then every single time after that, we battled for like years. Every single time he watched me drive, he'd still come up and just randomly out the blue, he'd like shake my hand and say, like, right, try doing this differently. Try. And he was always like idle to me. And every single time I battled him, no matter how much I try and learn and how much I try and learn off of him, every single time I battle him, he always has something else he wants to pull out the hat. <laughs> yeah. And there's always another little trick that he hasn't shown me. It's just to say, like, like you know, it's there. you're still that little kid in the Amiga at the age of 19. Like, back it down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he's building, a, well, he's backing the 36 for this year, isn't he? He's put a JZ in it. Yeah, one J. Yeah, he's been, I've been on the phone to him a few times about that because he's been yeah. having little issues and whatnot. So he's been ringing me up, asking me about things like that. But it sounds like that's going to be a bit of a lively one. Yeah, he was telling me about it. Buxton, I think it were. Sounds like he's going to be one to watch. You know, he's got it in him, hasn't he? He's yeah. a very good driver. Yeah, definitely. While we're talking about good drivers and people who are on it, who do you think is going to win Pro and Pro Two? Well, um, I, I, I think the same as pretty much most people. Andy Frost is. A, just um, really good driver and he's going to be a good car. But my, my thought with him is that he might move up to BDC Pro if he gets the opportunity early on. Um, yeah. So whether he would win Pro 2, I don't know from my perspective. Um, so then maybe one of um, maybe one of the map lads might. Uh, might well, uh, I think you've all been mentioned, haven't you, on this? Like these yeah. chats that we've been having. Mm-hmm. I know Josh King mentioned you last night, were it? Night before. Yeah, that that was really, really nice of him, yeah, to mention mention my my car and me. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah. And so, yeah, hopefully one of us will do it. Um, it'd be nice to um, well, if you're doing if you're going off your drift cup finishes and stuff, I'm sure one of you will be up there. Might be all three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's hope so. If not the team event, anyway. Are you doing the team event, Matt? We we are, yeah. But Jay, Jay, Jamie's moved to another team for, uh, for the team event. So he's, oh, uh, is that a bit controversial, then? <laughs> but it's four of us, so it's a bit awkward. But how, yeah. how did the, how, who decided that you went on another team? Like, how did, you <laughs> I that bit off? decided that one. <laughs> uh, he decided for himself that he he didn't quite fit the full criteria. His car wasn't grey, um, and he didn't want to paint his nice new car. Um, <laughs> so, uh, he That's kind of, true, Mark. of <laughs> He's got plenty of time now, though. I don't know I have, but the, at the time, I think getting the car working was a bigger priority than spraying it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but, Obviously, it was a bit mutual at the same time because uh, Martin Monocott approached me to join Betty Surf. Yeah. And that's when I sat down and made a phone call with Mark and was kind of like, I sat there and said to Mark, I said, look, I've had this opportunity. It's 
I was shocked by the opportunity to have a message off of Martin Monacott. Um, there's four on the team. I think it's best if, like, are you okay if I go and join Betty Surf and you three? But still be part of Maps, guys. Yeah, still thing. be part of Maps as well, yeah. We'll still always be a big group of friends. It's just the team event, and I'll be running after Betty Surf instead. Yeah, for your points and stuff. Yeah. I suppose it makes sense. So then, what are you in? Not included, kind of thing. So well, it, was a, it was a better option. It was, as you say, one of us wouldn't have been included and would have been left out as such. Yeah. So what about pro class, Mark? Who do you think's taking that? Um. Well, because Josh said me, I'm going to say Josh King. <laughs> I'm returning uh, the favour, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ah, he's he's a good lad. <laughs> like like his driving style. Car you know, friends. Uh, so, yeah, go Josh. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah, well, he's, I think Josh personally could take it. He's he's got a good chance. Yeah. If his car holds together and he winds it back a little bit, I think he could definitely be one who's up there. Do one of you two want to tell us who you think? Pro and Pro 2? James? Um, <laughs> pro 2 is is just open. Absolutely open. Any Anybody in Pro 2 could, could take it. Like, all, all of the guys that came up from Drift Cup last year, all the existing guys. Um, How many is there coming up from Drift Cup? Do you know? N- no, I would, I would say... On the stack, are they? I don't know. I'm not sure. About 10, wasn't it? Oh, uh, it was the top 10 got the opportunity. One to five had to, uh, six to ten can do. Um, I'm not, I can't think off the top of my head how many have actually committed, though. I'll have to double check. I thought it was one to four had to, five to eight. Boys. It could be that. I don't know the rules. <laughs> 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 but you probably should, pal. Yeah. I probably should, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On that note, I'm on another drink. <laughs> so, do you think it's going to win pro then, James? Um, I I think Martin is is definitely de- Martin, obviously Martin Monacott is definitely there with a big shout. Um, Ollie Evans could do a could do a one two. Um, I, I don't know. It depends if any. I guess any if there's any cross conflict between between Driftmasters and BDC. Yeah. Where it's yeah. Always, always alive. Put, yeah, we never know. They could be because obviously all the season's changing now, isn't it? So yeah. yeah. They may be some still good on that one. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um so yeah, uh, well for me, yeah, Matt and that would be that'd be my my choice, I suppose. But yeah, pro two, like I say, written for anybody, any single Anyone can take it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, how about you, Jamie? I agree with James on that one about it could be anyone's pro two. Um, Look, we want an answer, pal. I Come know on. this is great. Just tell us, isn't it? good. <laughs> You're all a bit I too agree. nice. We want a bit of attitude off you. A bit of. <laughs> I'm going to win. If you don't know who's going to win, just say it's going to be you. No, no, I, I, I was going to say, I think Andy Frost is a good chance. Can't you beat Andy, though, Jamie? And Jamie, so surely you can beat Andy. Pardon? Can't you beat Andy? No, I had my arse handed to him at Three Sisters, you remember rightly. Yeah, but you <laughs> he pushed go. me five times across the last two games. Yeah, That's one, it was once, two, three, and then he hit me with a back of car twice as well. <laughs> yeah, he but changed you the floor flicks, and just pushed me. To be fair, though, you did have half the horsepower. And I was on 205. Yeah. <laughs> Remolds. <laughs> you can beat him, can't you? No. That's, that's, that, he's, he's insane driver, he is. Andy Frost is. But what, if you if you turn up at the line now and you look to the side, you've got Andy Frost. You've lost your battle already. Yeah. And he changes mindset. I put the car in reverse at three sisters. I was going to back back down the line. <laughs> <laughs> and the get it mixed up and I'd end up with someone else. Just they like, say all this. My face. They say all this, but then once they're in the cars, you only got to watch them at Drift Cup and that's not what they're meaning, is it? No. They're all serious drivers. But the other one I thought as well was Charlie Hooms. Yeah. 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 Uh, when he's got his head screwed on, he is, he is just... I had to, When I was at Drift Cup round one, me and him were in seed, unseeded together. 
and we had three one more time in the top eight. Yeah. And just it was like cat and dog. Every single run was like cat and dog, and it was like you were having to do stuff where you knew you were either going to end up in your on your roof in the middle of a free season, <laughs> or you were going to get an advantage going into the next run. And it just ever since then, he's I've just said he's oh, I've loved watching him because yeah, he's a really good line consistent. driver. Yeah, super consistent. And then pro, I think Martin Monacott again, just because he's had a lot of luck over the last few years, but he's had a lot of bad luck at the same time. True. And he's had he's had really good events, really bad events, and it seems like in the last minute it's always gone against him a little bit. And I think he's he's done him for it this year. Yeah, he's definitely, like we might have said pretty much every night, he's hungry for it and he's got the confidence. His confidence is through roof at the minute, isn't it? So, I've, we'll messaged him at, I've messaged him at 11 o'clock at night before and he's messaged me back saying, still doing fibreglass for the early hours. <laughs> and it's just like, you're mad. I'm in, like, about to go to sleep and you've got work tomorrow and you're still doing fibreglass at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. It's just pure commitment. Yeah, and he's smashing the uh, simulator in, isn't he? But yeah. I, I, I've just messaged uh, Ricky Lawrence. Did you see that Drift Games have got the simulator on that? Uh, yeah, it's on like now, isn't it? They're doing that, yeah. Well, i seen Ricky Lawrence for driving, so I just messaged him saying, uh, make sure you spin after that line, pal. Go to his <laughs> team comp. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't do it for us, did he? I said, do it for boys. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do it. No. So, have you boys got any questions for Matt? We've been going nearly an hour now, so oh, yeah. Matt ready to wrap up. Is he what you want to ask Matt about BDC? I'm curious to ask you, Adam, about your wife's tab and what what you feel is wrong with it. I, it just doesn't steer very well. Like, I don't know if it's like the Ackerman or something. It like kind of feels like it's just crabbing. Like, it's just very vague. It's, it's hard to explain like Jason keeps asking me all the time what I don't like about it but I say it's like a simulator I that's don't know that's the way I see it I really like my voice back and I'll see Adam's voice back will be the same as mine as the same I think I think it's just what you get used to isn't it like Matt I think Matt's car drives horrendous with wise fab off but obviously Matt's got Matt we used to how he's were driving and he could drive it but I think it's just down to like personal preference. But there ain't no Ackerman adjustment on it, is there? No, no. Whereas I think, I personally I think, if you look at any picture, it looks like it's got zero Ackerman. I think that's the main thing, what I don't like about it. What would you change to? Uh, either the Paul McCarthy stuff from Ireland, which is like a tubular bottom arm and a chopped tub. Or SLR, but they're both about the same price, I think. Who's running SLR kit? Who's like doing well with it? Uh, over here, Matt Walker runs it. All Scottish lads run it on their cars. Yeah. And then like what Chelsea don't know for swears buying it. Yeah, that's the only person I know to be on it really. Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, literally. Half of cars in Scotland are on SLR, so it can't be that bad. But yeah, I think basically it's just personal preference, and it's, it seems like on transitions. So like when you like at T side when you come out of the hairpin, you want to transition fast. It just seems to like crab to the left before it'll transition, kind of thing. Like get stuck to the left a bit. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I don't like it. You could do a, t- a, t- a try before you buy it, couldn't you? You could do a try in a few, <laughs> chucking them on during a few drift days. It felt yeah. that simple. Yeah. In a few arms. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's about it from me. Have you got anything else you want to ask us or Matt? Um, no, I don't like questions. <laughs> what's the chances of getting something down south, Kent? Always trying. Um... It's one of them, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. It's just a case of dropping on the right stuff. Um, there's issues with previous um, the stuff that's been down there before. It's either people who've run them badly or the venues have just got something against drifting, so it's trying to build that 
build that barrier back up and um, well overcome that barrier to try and get down there. Uh, but yeah, we, we need to go down there. There's such a fan base down there as well. Um, the minute I had the, um, this this year, there was supposed to be the first and the last round was originally going to be down in Essex um, at Lakeside, where the uh, where the coach side where the coach park was. Um, but I got let down last minute basically, so I'd, I was at the point of signing the contract, um, and the the land actually sold. So round one and round six this year would have been there. Um, so it's just stuff out of my control. Yeah. Shame. But you weren't expecting that one, were you? No. Well, <laughs> really. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it. We've been going for just over an hour now, boys. So we're good yeah. to chat to you. I yeah, it's good to get to know a bit more about you, boys. So roll I hope you do all as well as you did in Drift Cup at mm. BDC this year. I hope you come with a bit more attitude and a bit more uh, confidence <laughs> that you're going to win. A bit more sass. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more sass, yeah. yeah <laughs> best behaviour. <laughs> That's the thing, you don't have to be. You're yeah, supposed you to get a few beers down you and chat it's shit. Not even, James, you've not even had one swear word. <laughs> no, no, I've done really well. I've done really well. <laughs> he had a list of stuff what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, Go on, say it all now. Say all the bad words now. Well, uh, sure. Shit, fuck, cunt. He, he, he even wrote a list of things to say. He had um, a list of one-liners as well. Where was they? <laughs> Come on, who is a one-liner to leave on? No, 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 no. The moment's gone. The moment's gone. <laughs> no, it's pal. Right, we'll leave you to it, boys. And uh, yeah, like I said, it was good chatting to you. And we shall see you Thank all you at man. round one. See you around yeah. one. See you soon, boys. Peace out.